Hi everyone! Recently I got a very interesting question from one of my followers and it was which things I don't like in coloring books and I realized that it would be quite interesting to answer because those answers they heavily influence me in the moment when I decide whether or not I want to purchase new coloring book. Disclaimer. I know that each of us is quite individual and if I don't like something it's perfectly okay if you like this thing in coloring books. And second, even if I have shown some of the coloring books in this video about dislikes, it doesn't mean that I don't like the book in general or that I don't plan to color in these books. It's just some moments. So let's start from the first one. I don't like glued bindings and especially when it combined with perforation. Here I have my first coloring book which I purchased as a start of my coloring book hobby and it's very precious for me. But unfortunately it has glued binding and also quite heavy perforation. So all pages and they are two-sided. They constantly risk to fall out and I am even afraid to open this book. And it's a constant problem for me. I think that I would be coloring in this book much more frequently if not this binding. I know that in the end after I would finish to color it, I will be able to attach binding to the cover, but perforation it's definitely for me a minus for coloring book. And it's fun that sometimes when I read reviews on Amazon about books, many people complain that books don't have perforation and for them it's a fault of the book. And for me it's an advantage. I think that if I want I always can cut page using knife, but perforation definitely isn't my thing. Next point is quite obvious and it's very thin, almost transparent paper. Here is a book by Selina Fenick and you know how much I adore designs by Selina. But sometimes paper in her books is absolutely shitty, I'm sorry. I can't stand when I can see through the page uh, black lines on the next page. Yes, I know that I can put a white sheet of paper under it, but still I definitely prefer don't purchase books with such paper, only if they have beautiful designs. Next complaint is again about paper. In this book paper is thin, soft and with very strange tooth. So I still don't know how it's possible to cover big areas, especially like background. It's not so bad when we have detailed pictures, but if we have images like this one where we need somehow to cover background and we can't use neo colors, watercolors or even acrylic paints, I think, I definitely think that it's a huge problem. So if a book is printed on a very thin paper, I try to look. If designs are very detailed and I don't need to fill in the background, then maybe I would purchase such a book. But definitely soft and thin paper with strange tooth also isn't my thing. Next, I don't like very heavy gray scaled coloring books. I know that many people color grayscale books and end results are beautiful and look very professional. But for me, and it's very individual, but I simply don't feel any interest, in, interest to color such pictures when all shading is already indicated. And I think that if, when already even background is filled in with grayscales, the final image looks dirty. At least I tried to color similar images couple of times and I was extremely 
unhappy with the result. I prefer my pictures to be line art, so I am not interested in grayscale books. Next thing which uh, disappoint me a little bit in coloring books even if I am a huge fan of Daria song art, it's when parts of a very detailed image is lost inside the binding. I also have a couple of books where I have picture of an animal on the spread and due to this very tight binding, part of the center of the animal's head is lost inside the binding or where left and right parts are not totally match due to this very tight binding. I think that if you create book with a lot of spreads in it, you definitely have to create book with not glued but sewed binding and also it's better to leave some white space between two pages. Sometimes it's really very difficult to get to this part inside of the binding in order to color this area of the page which is very close to it and when you color the whole spread you definitely don't want to have uncolored areas in the center. So pictures on the spreads have to have very nice bindings. Next thing which I don't like in coloring books, it's when coloring book has a lot of uh, page fillers. I don't know how to explain it better, but it's a page with a very simplified design, which is not very interesting to color. Honestly, I don't know who would be interested to color page like this one. And I feel like artists simply didn't want to work for a day or uh, other day more and to create a really interesting image to insert into book. And I can compare this book to other books with the same price and which have interesting designs on each of the pages. So if book has a lot of such simplified page fillers, I definitely won't be purchasing it. And the second point is when images have a lot of um, multiplied digitally copied images. Look at those horrible clouds. I love the board here and maybe I would color this page, but I absolutely hate those clouds. They transform adult coloring book into something for children. I would prefer my own cloud to draw my own clouds and I already colored page from this book and I remember how much efforts it took me to mask all those clouds using several layers of paint. When I see elements like this in coloring books, I feel like the artist doesn't respect his customers. Next thing which I don't like to have in my coloring books is when we have huge empty background around tiny image. You know how much I love Mermaid in Paradise book, but some of the images are not so big like this one and they have huge empty spaces around them. And even if it's possible to work with watercolors, neocolors or acrylic on this paper, I definitely not inspired to start this page. I prefer to have detailed pictures where artists put some more efforts into filling in pictures. Next thing. I don't like excessive or very thick black lines and when I think about whether I want to purchase or not my next coloring book, I always try to look at the thickness and amount of black lines. For example here and I selected this book because it's a page which I want to do next. I sometimes is really frustrated by all those excessive black lines. I know that they represent waves, 
But again, I prefer to draw those waves by myself and for me those black lines sometimes they spoil the whole picture. For example, on this one I would prefer some to have some kind of stone on the forefront and probably some kind of the trees or island on the background it's <laughs> instead of all those black lines on the water. And instead of thinking about which colors I want to use for the whole image, now I have to think which medium I need to use in order to mask all those black lines. And even worse, it's when we have all those black lines on the portraits, like here. It's not so bad when we have black lines on the face of Mary, which I don't like in Sherlock. But when I look at this image of Greg Lestrade, which is my favorite character, he is so attractive. But with all those black lines on the face and on the hands, I absolutely don't know how it's possible to color him and to mask all those black lines. These black lines are definitely one of the reasons why I still don't color in Sherlock book. And the last thing which I don't like, it's probably some kind of my personal problem, but I definitely don't like when we have pictures where plants are growing from animals or humans. And here I have some examples from Hannah Carson books and if it's possible I always try to correct these images but sometimes I simply don't know how to do it. Recently I did similar image with bunnies and flowers were growing from spines from backs of bunnies and I really put a lot of efforts into correcting them. Here we have beautiful portrait, but with all those flowers growing from her hands, I definitely never will be coloring it. And of course I won't be coloring this one. For me it's disgusting. I am sorry, but it's my personal opinion. You know that I consider Hannah Carson as one of the best creators of coloring books. It's simply that some of her images are not very appealing for me and I won't be coloring them. And one of such images is where we have some plants or mushrooms growing from faces or from animals. I hope that I haven't offended any of you. I would like to listen your opinion what you don't like in coloring books. I thank you for this very interesting prompt for video and I hope to see you very soon. Thank you for watching.